All right, everybody. So we're gonna look at taking the valve cover off. We're gonna have to take, um, there's an ABCS line that we're gonna have to take off. Um, let's see here if I can show y'all. This ABCS line right here, uh, this is the driver's side head. We're gonna have to take this off um, and the valve cover will come off. Um, uh, yeah. So, we're going to get to work taking those off. Um, some of your other ones will have these little rubber grommets here. It just depends on what model you have. Um, if they have the rubber grommets, make sure you get a new set to replace those. So we're going to pull this off and then we're going to... I'll show you guys kind of how to take the cams off and all of that. Now, if you have it on an engine stand, I would highly suggest rotating the motor so that um, it is more vertical. It'll make taking the cams out a lot easier here in a little bit. And also what you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove your coil packs and your spark plugs. So we're going to work on getting this head off uh, at the moment and um, I'll kind of show you all how to do that. Um, the first thing you're going to have to do is pretty obvious is uh, go ahead and take these valve cover bolts off. Uh, you don't have to remove the uh, oil drain tube if you don't want to. Uh, one less seal to worry about later. If yours is leaking, basically everything on this car is leaking, so um, it'd probably be wise to get a master rebuild kit. That'll come with every gasket you need. You're going to need new cam seals, um, as well as a few other gaskets, um, and we'll kind of go through that and show you. It may also be cheaper. Uh, the master rebuild kit comes with a lot of stuff that you probably won't end up using anyways. So if that's the case, um, uh, they're like 300 and something dollars to get the master rebuild kit. And uh, it's worth it if you want everything. Um, otherwise, if you want to look up part numbers and all that, you can do that also. So um, the other key to remember is each one of these bolts has a barrel on them and they're different lengths. Like that one's one length. I believe, if I can show you, that one's the same. But basically, you just want to kind of know where they go. You'll know when you're trying to put it back together. There you go. See, these are different lengths, so you want to make sure that you at least know where the longer bolts go and where the shorter bolts go when you're going back together with the thing. I typically just leave the bolts in the holes and set it aside. Uh, but we'll work on getting this off, and I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. Okay, so we have our valve cover off. You'll notice there's a gasket here. You're definitely going to need to replace that. This one was probably shot anyways. Um, but go ahead and replace that. It's definitely suggested you have a drip pan or something because even though you've drained the oil, uh, oil will just come out of this regardless. Um, and so the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take our cam caps off right there, there, and there. And also these two front ones. These two on the very front are pretty prone to um, breaking. So we're gonna hopefully not have any issues with that. Um, next thing you also wanna do is make sure you notate which one of these goes where. Now if you see real close, you can see it has a little arrow on it. I get it to focus. Um, it has an arrow on it and then even the writing on Let's see here even the writing it says 4 I and this one says 4 E so it's cylinder uh, let's see cylinder 4 exhaust cylinder 4 intake so and it even has an arrow but it's really important to notate that and also you're gonna want to kind of check the lobe of your cam if you've had oil starvation you'll notice that there's gonna be a little bit of cracking um, and it'll look a little bit different it won't um, and you, know, you just want to make sure that that's in good shape um, another thing to note is I'm about to rotate this engine on the engine stand vertical and the reason is is uh, this car has buckets that fit inside that the cam inter interfaces with these roller buckets and um, they'll just slide out and so you definitely don't want that to happen uh, because they are all measured to certain tolerances 
and you don't want to lose that. So if you can keep the head faced um, down when you remove it, uh, you won't have to worry about all that stuff falling out. But I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so I took the banjo bolt off of here, and there is a washer that sits in between this uh, line and the uh, AVCS solenoid, so you want to make sure that you don't lose it. Um, it's easy to, there's, there's the bolt and then there's the washer that goes into that. So you want to make sure you set those aside. Now before um, you take this off completely, I've already got the rear caps off, but before I take this off completely, uh, I think I'm going to take the header off first. Um, that will keep those buckets that I was talking about. You can see them. There's one right there. There's one for each valve. Um, so that'll keep those buckets in place, with the cam being held in place, um, so I don't lose which one goes where. And I'm going to take the header off uh, next, which involves taking this heat shield off, which is 312s on this side, and quite a few more on the other side. I think the other side's 14s. Um, and then there's three bolts uh, at the bottom of each head where the header bolts into the head. Uh, there's a stud and there's little three nuts. So um, hopefully those aren't frozen up. And we're gonna pull the header off next. Um, and make sure, you know, by this point your up pipe is disconnected from your turbo somewhere so it all comes out together. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so got the heat shields off and I gotta undo one more bolt on the up pipe and then get the bolts where the header goes into the head. See like right there, there's one, two, and then there's one on the bottom side. Also, in pulling my O2 sensor, I found that. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how your O2 sensor blows out or gets deformed like that. But uh, I guess I'm gonna be replacing the front O2 sensor. So, part of it happens, I guess. It's pretty gross, so. Anyways, um, I'm gonna finish taking this header off and then I'll show you how to pull the head off in just one second. Oh, okay everybody, got my heads headers off. There's the gasket. Uh, probably gonna replace those. Those are looking pretty gross. And as you can see, I still have the up pipe attached to the car. Um, so when we do the other side, we'll take the turbo and the up pipe off. But I just wanted to show you kind of the basics. So we have our cam caps, everything's loose. Um, and I usually try to keep the bolts in the same spots. I don't know that it really matters all that much other than the front ones. Um, but not a bad practice. So another thing to think about is um, if you're not taking your cams with your heads, I would suggest doing that so they can lash your valves and make sure everything's still under tolerance. But if you're not doing that, um, I would suggest putting your cams in a plastic bag to keep them oiled. They're just steel, they're not stainless, so they will rust and you don't want that. So this just lifts up here. There's a little tab right there. You wanna make sure not to get on that surface, but a little tab right there. You pop it free and this just lifts right out. I'm gonna go set this over here, out of the way. Okay. And then here's our cams. And cams should just lift right out. Now these are kind of, that one wasn't stuck. Here's my plastic bag. Put those in. Now these, they're not, you can't really mess them up um, as far as which one goes where. Man, that is really stuck in there. Okay, well I'm gonna work on getting that out. Um, I've got to head out not too long from now, so I'm gonna work on getting this done real quick. Okay, got both cams out. Now you'll notice there's six bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they are a 12 point 14 millimeter. A normal 14 won't fit on them. You have to have a 12 point and you are gonna need a breaker bar and maybe even a friend to hold the stand in place. I've already broken these free. Uh, I, I'm always out of breath after I do those, so. That tells you I'm either out of shape or they're quite a bit of torque to put on them. So you undo these six bolts. Now, there's a lot of wishy-washy stuff. They're torque to yield, so you could technically reuse them. 
Um, I'm doing ARP 2000 head studs, so I won't need to reuse these anyways. But uh, basically we're going to pull these out. I'm going to finish uh, loosening all of them, and I'll pull the head off and show you what that looks like. Okay, well we got the head off. Here's our last bolt coming out. Um, keep those if you're going to reuse them. And then just grab onto the head any way you can and lift it off. There you have it. Now, don't set it down like this or your buckets will start sliding out and then you'll be scrambling to figure out which one went where. Um, and then you should have access. If you're going to set it down on the head surface, uh, make sure you set it down on something gently. Don't dent it to where they can't fix it. You know, here's your head gasket. You can see both these pistons look okay from here. So I'm guessing it's the other side uh, that cracked. Um, but we'll do some more digging and find out. Um, and we'll, uh, there's gonna be a lot of coolant still in this jacket, this cooling jacket and the oil jackets. So just make sure you have your drip pan ready for when you turn it over on the other side because it's gonna drip oil uh, and coolant and you don't wanna mess with that. Um, so, this uh, head gasket doesn't look like it was too bad. You can see there's still a solid seal around the oil passages. Um, so, maybe a little leaking of compression here and there, but um, nothing, nothing that is uh, really concerning. Um, I guess over here it looks like we've, we started losing compression. We may have actually been leaking coolant into our uh, cylinder, but we will we don't have to worry about that. We've got a new short block anyways um, So I'm gonna flip this over and start doing the other side I don't know how much I'll film because it's literally the exact same other than you have to take a little bit more crap off the way uh, Crap off to get it out of the way So I'm gonna continue to strip this short block down on the other side and I'll show you that All right. Well, we got both heads off uh, surprisingly, I'm ex I was expecting to have a messed up ringland but I'm not seeing one um, probably failed behind that makes sense as to why it would have made it to the uh, to the oil pan probably the piston skirt or something along that lines is what failed but definitely have piston in my oil pan but anyways so here's my heads they're both off and I'll take those to a local guy um, to get checked out and um, cleaned and all that. Another thing I noticed is these little half moons, whoever put these on, these heads have been off this car before. Um, there's some screwy stuff here and there I've noticed. I don't know the story behind it, but um, that's not, I mean, they just caked that stuff on those half moons. Uh, not all models have these. I think the D25s and the 08 to 14 WRXs don't have those, but make sure you pop those out and reseal them. You can sell it. They didn't even use the same RTV. Um, wow. Anyways, so we got this done. Uh, we are down to just taking off the bits of the short block that we need to transfer over. So at this point, what I'm going to do is clear off a spot and uh, take off the oil pan and anything else. Um, that I need to and just start transferring over all the like the cross member pipe um, or the, and you know these hoses and this and that motor mounts if I don't know I may get new motor mounts this thing's pretty gross um, so you know uh, go ahead and start doing that process it's kind of actually amazing the uh, cross hatching in this block doesn't look that bad so I'm wondering if it's the original block at all but uh, it doesn't matter anyways, we have a new one. Um, and also, I'm going to be deleting this uh, oil heater slash oil cooler. Um, it's not worth having for where I'm at. And um, I've got a plug that I'll show you all uh, as I do that when I put the new block together. Um, but yeah, it's time to start taking the rest of this stuff off. Brackets, sensors, and all that. And putting them in. Um, I think I'm going to actually have to end up taking these dowel pins out as well. Which will be an interesting process. But uh, we'll get there. All right, well, I think that's it for today. It's a little bit shorter video than yesterday, but um, you all get the gist. Um, and I'll kind of film the rest of this stuff. And I mean, obviously I'm gonna need a new PCV. This one's so brittle, it just broke. Um, and a few other things here and there. I'm gonna need to replace. 
Um, I'm going to show you all how to loop loop this to this so you don't need to have the throttle body um, having coolant in it anymore and we'll go from there so guys it's been fun I'm sorry this was a little bit shorter than the other videos are going to be but um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that just want to know how to take off heads uh, out there so y'all have a great day and if you have any questions or anything you need uh, help with feel free to ask I'm going to get out of here before this lawn mower guy gets too loud. Alright guys, have fun and Subaru on.